stop. That's pretty much been my life for the past couple of weeks. Hello, hello. So, yeah, the past few weeks, uh, I can't, I don't know when this video is going to be uploaded or what's going to happen with it, but uh, yeah, the past couple of weeks, I basically haven't done any flying at all. Uh, there's been a few dramas here and there. Um, yeah, one of our aircraft has gone offline. It had a technical issue and it's, um, yeah, it's gone down for maintenance. So unfortunately, because of that, we've been down to one Piper Tomahawk, meaning that all of our customers, all of our existing students have been booked into that, which means there's no space for me to get any lessons in, unfortunately. So I haven't done much flying, but it's not the end of the world because the weather it's been quite bumpy, it's been quite windy up here the past couple of weeks and given that I'm still at the start of my PPL training right now it's actually windy conditions would actually hamper my training um, because what we're working through just now is sort of seeing the primary and secondary effects of um, you know the or the primary and further effects of primary flight controls and things like that anyway Basically, it's better to have smooth conditions at this point in my training uh, than to have bumpy conditions. However, um, what I have done now is I have picked up a couple of other books and I wanted to just talk you through them quickly just to kind of give you an idea of where I am and what I'm thinking and kind of what I want to do with my training. So, if we have a look back on the famous classroom table, or soon to be famous classroom table, so... I've gone through a bit further through the flight training book and what I've found is that it might be best to read this periodically. What I've discovered is, um, if we have a look at the books there, it's actually not that good. Or I don't think, it's not a case of you start at one and work your way through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, they don't follow that kind of that sequential order. It, the, um, like the subjects that you learn doesn't follow that order. For example, we'll come back to the books here. So, to begin with, you've got your flying training, which gives you basically a, a basic outline of each lesson and what's involved. And then you've got air law and meteorology. Now, here at Highland Aviation, if we're... I, I, I don't know if it's a legal requirement, but we, as a flying school, need our students to have got a medical certificate and have passed the air law theory exam before they can go for their first solo. So the air law is one of the first subjects that will encourage students to learn. But then navigation, which is the green book there, um, that would then come, that comes right at the end of your PPL, or that's kind of like the last chunk of your PPL training. So you don't basically start at number one and work your way up. You kind of bounce back and forth between the different books and the different subjects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach the subjects kind of in this order and see um, see how we go. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep coming back to the flying training and I'm going to just reach, or sorry, read each lesson as I come up to it. So uh, for example, um, you know, lesson one was exercise, I think exercise 4.1. So the, the primary, there you go, the primary effect of each main flight control there. So that was the first, that was what you would have seen in the previous video. And then we're going to move on to the next lesson after that. Uh, but I think it's, it's it'll be good to go back to that on a lesson by lesson basis and not try and read through the entire book, make notes based on the details that the book gives me and then come back to it. Um, I think it'll be better to kind of just come back to the book just for the couple of lessons, just to refresh my mind of what I've done most recently and then maybe get read up a bit on what's coming next and then kind of keep it more localized to the kind of the where I am in the syllabus at any given time as I said rather than just go through the whole lot and then forget half of it by the time I'm ready to actually do those lessons at that time anyway next uh, I've picked up book number two here so air law and meteorology um, air law because as I just said I have to do it for before I can go for my first solo now, meteorology, I'm actually excited to start learning about this. I haven't learned about it yet. I'm still working through the air law section. But um, meteorology, that really interests me because one of our examiners, um, Alan Nicholson, he's a, or he's a recently retired 747 captain, and he 
like he can just read the weather. He can just look outside and recognize any type of clouds and what that cloud represents. Um, like you'll see a line of clouds and you go, oh, there's a there's a mountain wave passing out to the east. This is a how do you know? And he and he'll explain it. And and I'm I'm really kind of fascinated by the meteorology aspect of flying. Um, and plus, it's also going to help me in my day job as uh, being an operations assistant, because you know having knowledge of the weather and understanding what the weather is going to do will help me provide just a better service to my customers. Because I can say, oh yeah, you know we're expecting a, a cold front to blow through today. The afternoon should be fine, or we can't, we can probably won't be able to fly in the morning. You, you see what I'm getting at? So I'm really excited to start learning about meteorology because I think that'll be quite. Um, quite a, a practical subject to uh, to know about in in depth and in detail so um i'm currently working through air law um and uh yeah i'll, I'll do a little thing for air law in a minute uh and then i've also just got the communications book today which is basically just looks like it's going to cover all the radio comms and um you know call cover a few other bits and pieces like uh, airspaces and how to enter and, and depart airspaces and things like that and what the kind of the procedure and the process is for making radio calls um, I'm not going to be learning about that immediately um, I'm going to be working through the air law and meteorology first and then I'll probably get onto communications now as part of the PPL uh, training uh, what I will be doing is I will be going to a, uh, a third party instructor um, there's a guy here in Inverness who is a former air traffic controller and he does uh, basically radio training and he also does radio examinations so yeah you have you have to do radio training for us it's a separate it's kind of like a, a separate thing because the the guy that does the radio training is a third party to our company um, however you know, so I think some flying schools in the UK might offer video training as well, um, actually at the school. So um, that's kind of like an additional thing. So as part of uh, getting your PPL, you'll have you'll end up with your PPL by the end of it. But you'll you also have your medical like your medical certificate, and you also have a radio license as well. So it's a, it's kind of like a separate qualification certification, if that makes sense. So. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to be doing that. Um, I'll have to speak to the instructors and get their kind of opinion on when the best time to do that will be. Um, but uh, the communications is going to be the, sort of the next thing that I'm going to attack um, after air law and meteorology. And I think what else I might do is I might also do the operational procedures because uh, the instructors have said that the air law and the operational procedures certainly the theory exams uh, apparently there's quite a lot of crossover between them so hopefully that will um, if I go and do the ops procedures um, hopefully I'll be able to to knock out a few exams in relatively you know a sh a relatively a short amount of time um, it's, kind of, it's kind of the idea that I want to do is I want to get a lot of the theory done and then kind of knock out the exams quite quickly um, Hello, future video editing Joss here. Now I apologise for the abrupt change in the video, but I didn't have much footage which matched up or flowed together well. So this is another clip recorded within a couple of days of that intro. Here, Lee and I are conducting a lesson briefing in the classroom. So before each lesson, a student will go through a briefing with the instructor to prepare them for the following lesson. Now to begin the briefing, you will hear Lee and I talk about threat and error management. This is a massively important safety concept which any company involved in aviation should be applying to their operations. During the briefing, we identify threats or items which pose a danger to our flight and the aircraft. We will also identify errors that we as pilots could make. And finally, we will look at management. These are the things that we can do to eliminate or reduce the risks that we identify in the threats and errors. So here's the first few minutes of our briefing. Cool. Right, teach me your ways. <laughs> teach me your ways. No bother at all. Okay, so we're going to look at exercise 6.1 for your logbook, which is straight and level. So the aim of this exercise is to learn how to achieve and maintain straight and level flight 
at normal cruising power. So I've listed both the aircraft up there. So in the PA-28, it's going to be 2300 RPM. In the PA-38, it's going to be 2100 RPM. And that should theoretically give us a cruising speed of 90 to 95 knots. Yep. Alrighty. So let's move on to the threat and error management that we looked at uh, before. So threats that we can encounter during this flight. Uh, one that was a big factor today. Weather. Weather, yeah. So the weather. What else? Um, other aircraft? Yeah. So the traffic. Traffic. Um, aircraft condition. Condition? Mm, not really a threat. Wildlife birds? Yeah, yeah. That was oh, yeah, just, just about to say. So weather, traffic, wildlife, and up in the north of Scotland, we've got lots of it. Rain. Rain, yeah, it's uh, come under weather. Yeah. For a break, probably. <laughs> yeah, that was really swift. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what errors can we introduce? Um, quite, quite a new pilot to this, so yeah. Handling probably one of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, lack of knowledge. Can't count that. Yeah. Knowledge. Aircraft limits? Yep. Anything else? Procedural. Position? Yeah. Still quite new to the area. Yeah. So you might find yourself a little bit disoriented. Might get lost. Yeah. So what's the other thing we got to consider? Fuel. Yes. So we got enough fuel. So how could we mitigate or manage these and you know, obviously make life a little bit easier for ourselves? Well a big one. Well the, the kind of the get out of jail card was practice. Well, that was the last one. But yeah, we'll <laughs> go back to that. So we always start with look out. Yeah. And obviously that will help us with weather, traffic, wildlife, terrain. Yeah. It covers quite a lot. And the one that always goes with look out. Listen out. Yeah. Uh, proper pre flight planning. Pre flight planning, yeah. Yeah, just thinking, I need to, uh, to be clear on what defines like the, the clear definition of a threat. Yeah. And the, 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 the error. Yeah, so threats are things that we can't kind of control, yeah. and all the errors are the things that we kind of introduce. And management are the bit that we try and do during, before, to try and mitigate them. Yeah. Okay, so look out, listen out, pre-flight planning, and as you said, uh, practice here. Practice, and lots of it. Yeah. Okay, so, as we said before, we're going to be looking at straight and to finish off the video, here are some clips of Lee and I performing a quick flight in bad weather. I think at this point it had been a few weeks since my last flight, and we took this as an opportunity to just do something. However, this did allow Lee to teach and demonstrate how to fly a bad weather circuit, or a low level circuit. Now this is quite an advanced topic for me being a complete beginner at this stage, but it was a valuable experience nonetheless. A normal circuit pattern is flown in a rectangular shape, with the aircraft reaching an altitude of 1000 feet above the ground. With a low level circuit, the idea is to fly a smaller circuit pattern in case bad weather closes in around the airport.
In a low level circuit, you only reach an altitude of 500 feet above the ground and you fly in more of an oval shape to keep you closer to the runway so that you can maintain visibility. A low level circuit needs to be requested and approved by air traffic control. So after we run through the power checks, Lee takes me around for two low level circuits. We pick up the video just as we finish the first circuit and perform a touch and go for the second circuit. brings us to the end of a short bit sweet flight and also brings us to the end of this video. 
The next video I hope is going to be really really interesting as I was very fortunate and got to fly in a really really cool aircraft so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video please consider giving it a like and if you want to see more aviation and flight simulation videos please consider subscribing to my channel. If you do, don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you are notified when I either upload a new video or when I start a live stream. So until the next time, thank you all very much for watching, take care out there and I will catch you all later.